Hey guys, what's up? JK with Porn Reboot here, and today I'm going to be sharing with you what it's like to be porn free for 11 years. Now, before we get started, if you aren't a subscriber, do subscribe, and while you're at it, join my free recovery course, 20 Ways to Quit Porn, and also follow me on Instagram at Elevated Recovery. Last week marked my 11th year porn free. Now, I'd be lying if I said that it feels amazing or I have all these superpowers. 11 years is a long time, but after the first two years of porn, life replaces those sexual behavior challenges with new ones. And at the end of the day, the truth is I'm just a normal guy with regular issues like everyone else. I'm grateful to be porn free, um, but I'm not blessed with any porn free superpowers or anything extraordinary. I have my problems with relationships, I have family issues, I have anxiety about a few loose ends in my life that I haven't quite tied up, and I have obstacles which constantly you know, block my path. And the years back then that really mattered were the first two years, and I don't include them in my 11-year counts due to the occasional slips involved, but my experiences during those years are most likely similar to what you might be going through now if you're watching this video. Now, once you hit the two-year point, you'll be free to be whatever you were meant to be before your sexual behavior held you back. And that feels really good. It's kind of like releasing the handbrakes on your car on the highway, you know, after finding out that it's been, it's been on for miles. Now, uh, since 2012, I've coached men from a variety of backgrounds to full recovery from their behavior with porn, sex, and masturbation. And after working with my first few hundred men, I realized that there are really just four things that we need to get right to make it to that two-year marker. And today, I want to share those things with you. So the first one is understanding your pain and finding your painkiller. So ask yourself a few questions. And the first question would be, what is the single biggest pain that you are medicating with porn, sex, or masturbation? Um, is there a strong emotion like anxiety or anger or fear or sadness? Or is it constantly being under stress? Or do you have some unresolved issue from the past? Let's say sexual abuse, a bad rejection, divorce, maybe a mental health diagnosis. Is it loneliness? What is it? Identify which of the four it is and eliminate that pain by either attacking it at the root or developing skills to manage it. The second is uh, develop a predictable, simple recovery system. Now, you can have amazing willpower, you can read tons of books, you can attend 12-step groups, you can visit therapists, you can become a self-help junkie, but if you can't reliably stay off porn and masturbation consistently, then what's the point? You know, every man that I've coached who's two years out of his behavior with porn and masturbation has what I call a recovery system. And the system is different for every situation. It depends on your age, it depends on your pain, it depends on your lifestyle and much more. So for example, for a married conservative Christian man in his late 30s to early 40s, it might be his beliefs, then values, then coping skills, then accountability. You know, for a single uh, man in his late 20s to early 30s, a professional, it might be his environment, biochemistry, community, and then dealing with unresolved issues. For an established man with, you know, adult children who is in his 50s onwards, he might need accountability, he might need cognitive restructuring, he might need increased awareness, he might need coping skills, and he might need to be in the right community of supportive men. And at the end of the day, the point is the same. You kind of need to architect a system that works for you. So predictably controlling your behavior, that's what it needs to do day in, day out. And right now, you may already be using a system that's a good fit for someone else, but not for you. The third is use leverage to reduce the effort of recovery. Now, I don't know about you, okay, but I'm not a fan of worrying about my recovery every waking moment, you know, beating myself up about relapses and using these incredible feats of willpower to control my urges. Now, don't get me wrong. During my recovery, I used willpower to stop myself from objectifying you know, every woman I saw and from watching porn and masturbating at almost every free moment that I had. 
I realized that it eventually became exhausting the moment I tried my, uh, the moment my willpower weakened, you know, when I got tired or frustrated or when I was drinking, you know, and that would lead to this massive relapse. So the trick is to understand the moments when you are most vulnerable to relapse and what puts you most at risk, you know, and then you create boundaries around these things. And that makes the recovery process less tedious. Now, the most common way to gain leverage in recovery is to start slowly introducing accountability, boundaries, and coping skills into your life. So for instance, an accountability partner can check in with you at your most vulnerable times, and they can hold on to the password for, let's say, the App Store. Uh, filtering an accountability software can be a failsafe and it buys you time when you're triggered to act out on your urges. Um, and as you begin to feel confident with these basic boundaries and coping skills and your behavior, uh, and you can you know, better control your behavior, you continue to introduce boundaries, you continue to introduce more coping skills and uh, accountability at a greater level into your lifestyle. And what happens is within a few short months, you have almost nothing external to trigger you and you've built a solid accountability habit, solid coping skills. When you do this, you start gaining clarity in your life. You start to see new opportunities for self-improvement. You begin to reach out to therapists, to coach. Um, you begin to find these resources which, which can help strengthen areas of your life which were weakened during your addiction. And then your recovery speeds up. Your brain rewires faster while your urges to watch porn and masturbate continue to drop month by month. And these are the things that are happening in those first two years. Um, the fourth is surround yourself with people who have seen this movie before. And here's what I mean. Um, back in 2006, I was trying to get past 16 months of no porn, but it just wasn't happening, no matter what I did. And then I got my first coach. For the next year and a half, that's about 18 months, I didn't watch porn or masturbate. And by the 19th month, I had an active dating life. I had no more PIED. I didn't have any anxiety. So when I found out what worked, you know, I doubled down on that and I went for the best coaches I could find. So I hired three coaches. I hired coaches for recovery, I hired coaches for relationship, and one for my career. And while my friends, my peers were getting student loans, I was getting loans to invest in myself. And then you fast forward a few short years later and not only was I 100% free of all my out of control sexual behavior, I was in my dream relationship, I was debt free, I was making over six figures a year and I was in my mid 20s. I was transformed as a man and as a human being, and it was incredible. And now, whenever I want to accelerate my progress in anything in life, especially with my mindset and especially with certain behaviors that I have, I always remind myself of this quote, two times thinking is what can I do? And people who think 10 times ahead, 10 times thinking, think who can help me? Think about that. That's all I have for you today. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.